What's up, Badger fans? The cannons go boom. Let's talk about an intriguing piece coming to Madison and what it means for the linebacker room in general. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every day, sometimes a couple times a day. It's all good. Happy holidays to everybody as we continue to churn through the portal, the craziness, and signing day, and everything good that's going on. The Badgers added another piece. This one, this one's kind of fun and interesting. Let's play the cannons because you got to play them when they hit. Fire the recruiting cannons. Another one is headed to Madison on Wisconsin. Look at that. I didn't even loop them this time. So Jensiah Galvin comes in, a uh, linebacker out of University of Northern Iowa. This one's interesting. Um, bulked up, came in as a safety. He was a safety recruit. Bulked up, became a linebacker, but he still kind of moves like a safety. He's got some unique athletic ability. Played really well last year. Really blossomed him as a Richard freshman for that defense. Uh, Phil Steele gave him some postseason recognition. Um, this is, I want to put this start here. And this is a comment from his defensive coordinator at University of Northern Iowa, Jeremiah Johnson. He said, quote, he's a really impressive kid. He's athletic. He's got DB skills. But he's grown into a linebacker body, so he's like 215 pounds, but he can run like a safety and has unbelievable football instincts. Let me put that in here. Um, and that is a, a quote from, again, his defensive coordinator. So the couple of things you pull out of there, uh, former safety, DB, grown into a linebacker. So you're instantly going to think some of the coverage skills are there, some of the spatial awareness, the ability to move in space are there. He's going to need to get bigger, a little stronger. Um but unbelievable football instincts that certainly plays as well. Uh, it's a good get. Like it's it's a good get as the Badgers continue to kind of restock that linebacker room. Da Wolf says, "Let's go." What's up, Da? Logan Couch says, "I want more." I, you'll get more. Um, so he he commits, and we're going to break down his game more and more. Um, I have somebody I've reached out to, kind of that coaching staff to kind of get a little insight there. So we're going to break down his game more. I just wanted to talk about it a little bit, put it out there. I'm more interested right now and just look at that linebacker room. Like you've already brought in three transfers and you had a new starter at the end of last year in Christian Allegro that was starting to get reps or maybe not starter, but a new player getting consistent playing time. You've already seen a couple players leave Turner and Muma gets graduated. TJ Bowlers has moved the defensive line. That is a whole shale, wholesale, wholesale, wholesale uh, makeover of that linebacker room. And it needed it. Like that linebacker room needed to be revamped a little bit. Um, there's no disrespect to the guys that were there. Like certainly a guy like CJ gets played his heart out, right. And had a good year, but you needed to get faster, more athletic. Um, it, that room is going to look a hundred percent different next year. There's, you saw Daryl Peterson. Um, aside from that, who played last year, that's going to play a lot this year, uh, Cheney and Peterson. That's it. Uh, and then aside from that, it's the new guard and it's transfers. Uh, and maybe a guy like Lafayette playing right away. That, that unit is going to be very different. It probably going to have some youth, going to have some growing pains, going to have some ex inexperience, going to miss some tackles, going to miss some assignments, but it's probably also athletically going to make some plays that last year's group couldn't do. Some of those plays where the quarterback gets to the edge, running back gets to the edge, and we can't quite shut it off. This linebacking core next year, I think, is going to do a better job of that. Easton Park says another good addition to the room. I'd say I think it's another good addition, right? It's an upgrade in athleticism. Um, I'm curious how big, big he is right now. He's probably in the 220s, he, he, you know, maybe 225. He's got to get a little bit bigger, got to get a little bit stronger. But, again, in space, he gives you an athlete that can fly around, had a really good year last year. You and I is a good program. Like, they're, they're a very good program. So he's going to help in that aspect. Um, and aside from that, uh, Mountain Grizzly says, outside linebacker, I think he's going to start at inside because they picked up two outside guys, right, P Pius and Lowry. So they picked up two outside guys. I think he's going to start it inside. But the athleticism and the instincts, again, going back to what his defensive coordinator talked about, former safety that grew into a linebacker and unbelievable football instincts. If you have that combination of things, that's usually going to work out pretty well. And no matter what, you have to just increase the athleticism in that front seven. And to do that, you have to go get bodies. Not everybody will pan out, but if you take enough chances on athletic frames and athletic measurables, the guys that will pan out are going to give you an uptick in those areas that we were deficient in last year. Um, Jake Mayer says, uh, named a freshman All-American last year, like his upside if he adds to the frame. Yeah, he's got to get a little bit bigger, but that's a, that's very well said. There's upside here. This is an upside play for a guy who probably hasn't reached his ceiling yet. Now, not everybody hits their ceiling, but it's a good play. 
Coming on, Clink says, I was hoping that your announcement would be for a big, tall, fast, wide receiver. I agree. So, y'all, uh, we did a show with Brian Smith today that will drop tomorrow. You guys, Brian had a scathing review of Wisconsin's receiver recruiting for this, this cycle. Uh, the preview is essentially F. I don't know what they're doing. How could they only get one receiver? And that guy's not even a boundary guy. I, I, and I was like, yeah, no, I kind of agree, Ryan. They, they need to get another receiver on the outside. Commandant is all for that. Mountain Grizzly says need a receiver. Yeah, Brian Smith agrees. Guy said position that's needed is inside. Yeah, I think they, they needed both, and they already dressed outside, right? So now they, they got the inside guy. And listen, Tackett Curtis is still out there, right? We know the Bachelors have kicked the tires on him. We know he loves Madison. He could be an inside guy. He is an inside guy. He could be really good in this defense, and he's still out there, but that, that's a guy who's going to get a lot of interest. Wisconsin's not the only school that's going to kick the tires on former USC linebacker Tackett Curtis, former Louisiana, I think, the, the high school defense player of the year. Definitely an all-state guy, big-time prospect, big-time recruit. But they've already revamped this position. Even without Tackett Curtis, they brought in three transfers at linebacker alone. You can tell that that's a, a big need for them. They prioritized it, and they've addressed it. And what do all three of those guys have in common, right? If you say – if you had to, if you had to use one word to describe what all three of Pius, Lowry, and um, Galvin have in common, what is it? I would say it's toolsy, right? It, it's athleticism. That that's that's what you'd use to describe it. So, I think they've done a good job in that aspect. Logan Couch says, "Let's triple dip and get two receivers and tag and curse." Man, I'm here for that. Derry Raid, good friend of the show, obviously says the uh, three guys coming in who I think fill three different roles. Lowry, field outside linebacker, Galvin, field inside linebacker. Pius is the boundary outside guy. Shows some potential system changes. That's definitely something um, I would love to get into for more with Derry Raid, but I agree with them. These are different types of players coming in, right? They have different skill sets. And you needed more versatility in that room. You needed players who could do different things. And they all do it, and they all do it at an athletic level that Quite frankly, you needed an upgrade, right? We we agree on that. Mike H says, hopefully get a receiver that can spread the field. Smo says quickness. Yeah. Uh, we'll wrap it there, y'all. Really do appreciate tuning in. Um, unless there's any other questions, comments, thoughts, this is just kind of open forum. I wanted to talk quickly about the new commit. We're going to talk more about him, dive into his game a little bit more. Uh, again, I, I hope to get somebody from that UNI staff to kind of on and talk about it. Um, big show with Brian Smith tomorrow. He He loves the class, hates the receiver recruiting. So tune into that one. And a bunch more content coming up as always. But on Wisconsin, really do appreciate you guys. Um, Football Club David says, welcome to Wisconsin. Uh, Je Josiah. And then Tim Frederick says, let's get a receiver coach before getting more receivers. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to turn down a receiver, though, if you can get them, right? Because you don't have a coach. Like, you know, there's there's things that a head coach, Luke Fickle, Phil Longo, can tell a recruit and say, hey, this is who we're going to get. Or this is the type of guy we're going to get. And you, you, I think you can, it's certainly easier to sell it with a receiver coaching house, but you, I think you can still sell it and say, Hey, I have a system that produces big time receivers. We know who we're going to get. Uh, it's going to be a quality guy. I think they can, they can recruit without it, but obviously you, you do need that guy eventually. Um, Smo says on Wisconsin, keep it rolling. That's a great one to end on. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for, for tuning in. Um, there's one more question. Joseph says, on your running back post, National Signing Day, you said Yacomelli may play other spots. Would, would that be a receiver defense? I I think, like, I, I thought safety was a good fit for him. Justin liked him at receiver. He, he has positional versatility because he has size and some power. It may be still running back. Um, I just think, it, listen, it's interesting that they brought in three, right? And Chez is coming back. Uh, I think they clearly, there's probably some guys in that positional group that aren't going to be there for a ton longer. And you can you can kind of, you know, it just is it's a numbers thing. Like if they're expecting all three running backs to come in and play, that means some of the incumbents aren't, right? You're not playing four, five, six running backs because Chez is getting getting burned too. Holden Tuddick says, What's your record prediction for next year? Seven and five? Uh, I mean, I'm probably seven and five. Maybe eight and four. Yeah. I don't know. I think there's still work to be done. I, th I think the offensive line, the receiver group, a lot of the skill positions at corners are, are young. Uh, I still don't think the front seven's good enough, and the schedule's a beast. Like, maybe eight and four. I don't know. Listen to a lot of time for that, Holden, and that's a great question. I mean, what's yours? Like, I that schedule's a beast, and this team still has a lot of work to do. So that's what I'm going to go with. Anyway, I, I reserve the right to change that as my optimism will invariably grow over the, the finality of this recruiting period. 
on Wisconsin. Appreciate you guys. Uh, we'll talk later, probably maybe even today. I don't know, we'll figure it out. My gauge says schedule will be rough. Yep, that's it. Schedule will be rough, and this team isn't quite there yet in some spots. Easton Park says 10-2 and two if we put it together. I don't think so. Uh, like, I got swept up this year a little bit, but the offensive line still needs work. The defensive line still needs a lot of work. Um, I, I don't see 10 wins, although – I would be thrilled if it happened, and I respect the optimism. But um, I think, I think maybe nine is the absolute ceiling, and then I think seven and five or eight and four is probably likely. But we'll see. On Wisconsin, we'll talk later.